Now you smell that? It smells like 2019, the beginning of a great video game year as we have many great things coming out. Happy New Year everybody, welcome to the best video game channel on the internet. <laughs> yeah right, compared to who? Oh I'm sorry Rob, did you say something? No, oh, nothing, nothing, just saying how glad I am to be here. Shit. That's what I f***ing thought Rob. Well now, it's time to focus on another Top 10 Tales of Facts video. This time, focusing on Tales of Innocence. Hey, the Tales game on Nintendo, finally a good one. That's right, Rob. And it was also known to be the first Mothership Tales game on a handheld console. But what about Tales of the Tempest? Okay, 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 sorry. Mm-hmm. Just reminding everybody who's in charge around here. Well, I'm William Morris, and these are the assorted facts about Tales of Innocence. Number 10. It was developed by Alpha System. Taking the reins of development for Tales of Innocence was Alpha System. This was a Japanese studio that had previously done work for the Tales series through the Tales of the World spin-off titles. Founded in 1988, Alpha System spent its early years working on many titles with Hudson Soft. One of their earliest titles that they developed was Fighting Street, the home version of the original Street Fighter. Thanks to their work on the Tales of the World series, they were chosen to develop this title, and it was their first time working on the Nintendo DS. The first Tales game on the DS, Tales of the Tempest, had a number of difficulties, so Alpha System used it as a template to make improvements. They made adjustments to the battle system so that it felt new to series veterans while retaining its own identity. The team also added an updated version of the free run ability originally seen in Tales of the Abyss, in which it gave more freedom in battle for its players. Number 9. The game uses the Dimension Stride Linear Motion Battle System. For this handheld adventure, a new battle system was forged. It was given the title of the Dimension Stride Linear Motion Battle System. To achieve this new system, the team decided to combine the battle systems from two other Tales games, Abyss and Destiny. For Tales of Innocence, the players can move around freely while battling in a 3D terrain. Many previous elements returned for this game, which included the presence of gold and item drops. Rather than using basic commands for the AR, the player can assign five different commands. Each command features their own level of priority. With this, players can create and switch different AI combinations for different scenarios. The characters in the game possesses a tension gauge. When it is filled, they can enter an awakened state, which allows movement and attack to be increased. And in an awakened state, the Infinity Jam can be activated. This will let players execute long combos, so in the end, the fighting system is able to take on the old and meld it into something new. Number 8. The game's title was inspired by its main protagonist. The game's featured character is Ruka Milda, and he fights with a giant sword. No, not quite that one, but you are thinking I like that. Ruka is very introverted and often gets bullied a bit by his classmates. Ruka was a new take on male main protagonist when it came to the Tales series, as he is not quite an inspiring hero. A reluctant warrior, or a gun-ho fighter, but instead is quite lacking in self-confidence. His family plans for him to enter their merchant business, but he wants to be a doctor. Hmm, where have I heard that before? As the adventure goes forward, he begins to gain more confidence in himself and starts to develop feelings for the game's two pistol-wielding heroine, Idia Anime. Anime? Anime? This potty mouth. The game's title, Tales of Innocence, was inspired by Luca himself. It was meant to reflect a young boy thrusted into the troubles of the world. Ruga was also designed specifically to look frail and weak. Rather different from the other main characters, that's for sure. And yes, he does look like Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. Number 7. The characters were designed by Matsumi Inomata. Barely. For Tales of Innocence, Tales regular Matsumi Inomata would return to design its characters. But as it turns out, that was almost not the case. Inomata came very close to turning down the offer. At this time, she was also designing the cast of characters for Tales of Hearts as well, so doing Tales of Innocence led to a scheduled conflict. This greatly increased her workload, leading to a lot of stress. But she fulfilled the request and designed a cast that was quite unique from the other cast in the series. The clothing in the game saw the cast of Innocence wearing much more formal attire. By doing this, it did not present them as heroes, but more like regular folk. 
Also in addition, many design elements in the game featured many motifs from the late 19th and 20th century to make it feel like the turn of the century while a great war was taking place. So it is lucky that Innocence was able to enjoy Inomata's talents. Number 6. CRI middleware was used for the game's voice acting. As mentioned earlier, Tales of the Tempest was the first handheld main title game for the series. No, 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 not the first Tales game ever on a handheld. Let's not get that confused. Yeah, I see you down there in the comments getting ready to remind us that Fantasia had a sequel on the Game Boy Color. Yeah, we're way ahead of you. Stop it. However, Tales of the Tempest was so poorly received that its status of main title was unfortunately stripped away and it was reclassed as an escort title. Yeah, apparently it was that bad. One major problem with it was the voice acting. In Tempest, it was restricted during battles only. As far as Tales of Innocence was concerned, the developers desired to have full voice acting while keeping the planned features. To the rescue came CRI Middleware, a Japanese developer specializing in middleware for computers and video games. From them, the developers used the Q Seishu Sound Streamer, it was able to compress the voice acting to fit the game. So with this, the game featured around 160 minutes of actual dialogue. In the end, nearly 80% of the main scenario in the game was voiced, leaving the rest of the dialogue to text. It eventually came out to one gigabyte of storage space on the DS card. Sierra Middleware definitely came through for Tales of Innocence. Number five. The game's theme song was performed by the singer-songwriter Kokia. Matoi Sakuraba, the main man himself, did not work on Tales of Innocence. Instead, it was Kazuyo Nakamura, whose main works can be heard on Tekken and the Time Crisis titles, along with the help of Taisuku Sarachika. To give it its own unique style, ethnic music was incorporated. But even though Sakuraba did not directly conduct the music for this game, his influences were there, as his battle compositions were used as references. The main title for this game was Follow the Nightingale, and was written and performed by Kokia, a popular singer in Japan. She has numerous hits and is well known for her contributions to anime and video game soundtracks. Like she did before with previous songs, Kokia would write some parts of the song in code, or as she would call it, perplexing riddle words, and much like the game itself, the song primarily focused on Rukia and his feelings during his journey. Number 4. The characters can fight with their own unique styles. Tales of Innocence has a unique ability system, which allows the characters in the game to battle with their own styles. With this function, characters can be customized for any party role. There are six styles in total, ranging from Advance, Wisdom, Guardian, Technical, Innocent, and Versus. Equipping them to a character can provide benefits and reductions to their base stats. These styles can also be leveled up. When they get to a certain point, your chosen character can get certain abilities on the field and in battle. Each styles needs 100 points to level up, and you can reach a maximum of 50 levels. When you reach weapon shops around the world, you can also then add abilities to weapons with materials you find. This can give abilities to your weapons, such as poison or paralysis effects. Pretty handy. Number 3. It became the first Tales game to get a more mature rating. Tales of Innocence does stand out from the other Tales games in a number of ways, from different features to its battle system, character types, and so on. But it also does through its content. 
The game would become the first one in the series to get a rating other than all ages in Japan. The CERO, Computer Entertainment Rating Organization, is a Japanese entertainment rating organization that rates video game content in console games. While all tail games before received an all ages stamp of approval, which is a rating A, Tales of Innocence would get a rating B. This means that it was suitable for ages 12 and up. In North America, it's kind of the equivalent of a E10+. This is due to some violent imagery and some mild offensive terms. While still pretty mild, especially compared to today's standards, it does show that the series was shifting focus to more older audiences, as most later titles would receive a similar rating. Number two, it received a remake called Tales of Innocence R. After receiving some feedback from fans, it was decided, for some reason, that Tales of Innocence would get a remake. Eh, sure, why not? So in January of 2012, Tales of Innocence R was released. This was a ground up reimagining, hence the R of the original game. Developed by Seventh Chord, everything in the game from the animation to the coding itself was completely done over. Matsumi Inamata has also returned for the creation of two new characters, a spear woman named QQ Silas Neva, yeah, that just rolls right off the tongue, and a spellcaster named Kongwai Tao. Also returning was Production IG, like they did with the original Tales of Innocence, produced the new CGI opening and in-game cutscenes. Kokia was brought back as well to make a brand new theme song for R called New Day, New Life. And honestly, it's one of my favorites. Voice acting for Tales of Innocence R was also re-recorded as the entire main story was voiced yet again. This allowed some characters to be slightly altered a bit. The game in general was a complete overhaul upgrade, but it could not change one cruel sad fact. And number one, it was never localized for release outside of Japan. Tales of Innocence achieved success through its sales. It was one of the most pre-ordered games on Amazon Japan, and would reach number three in the opening sales. Overall, the game would sell around 246,000 copies. Despite that, however, the game was never localized outside of Japan officially. However, the fan translation group Absolute Zero did create a patch for this game with text translation and fix some bugs and glitches. Tales of Innocence R was also successful in Japan as well, as it would become the sixth highest selling PS Vita game for that year. However, it too did not get a Western release. This was due to the PS Vita's poor reception in the States. Tale Studio producer Hideo Baba stated once that Innocence R might get localized if Tales of Hearts R did well. But I guess that never happened. Which makes Tales of Innocence one of three Tales games to not be officially unleashed here in America. Which is a shame, because Tales of Innocence did improve on Tales of the Tempest, and pave the way for a future Tales Nintendo DS title, Tales of Hearts. And that's our list! Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. And also check out the Teespring store where we've put merchandise based on our logos down there in case you want to wear similar threads to these. Anyway guys, you've been a wonderful audience, you're watching the Brotherhood of Gaming, we'll see you next time. And remember, keep on gaming. Yeah, and be sure to visit the link down below, Teespring, so you can buy merchandise based on the Brotherhood of Gaming, like shirts, coffee mugs, condoms, lubricants, all that good stuff. Check it out. I use them myself.